Hi, nice to meet you. Namaste. Namaste. You look really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. What is the biggest sacrifice you made in order to fulfill your dream? This is a unique question. I like this. When I'm making music, I sacrifice my emotion. Do you remember the first lyrics you ever wrote? Ah, uh, no. No? No. Is there something you want to change about yourself? A better body shape. Your favorite school memory. Were you like a good kid or were you a naughty one? Uh, I was a good kid. Quite popular. Mm, yeah, I can tell. May Joji Rahahu Pajasom Ho. Hi everybody, my name is Sakshma Srivastava and I hope that all of you are happy and healthy. My guest today is K-pop star I Am, who has impressed us as both his work as a soloist as well as a member of the K-pop group Monster X. Hi! Hi, nice to meet you. My name is I Am from Monster X. We are so happy to have you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so we are here to talk about your third EP, Off The Beat. Tell us everything about it, the mood, vibe and theme of the album. Okay, um, the album name is Off The Beat and the title is Lua. I was trying to contain my free vibe inside when I'm in the music studio, my own. And it came out really naturally. I think, I know it might sound a little like stand, stand off offish, but I bet my six tracks is awesome. You talk about the track list and I have to ask you, uh, which song is your favorite? And I would request you to sing it for us. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, it's really hard to just pick one because, you know, six tracks are all my babies. So, you know, it's really hard to just pick one baby and say you're my favorite. But since the title is the title track, so I would like to say Lua. And inside of that song, I think the killing part is before the hook part, it, the falsetto. But I can take it off, yeah. yeah. A little bit more, please. You're such a good singer. <laughs> but I can take it off, yeah. Hey, one bar that can satisfy. So for those who don't know, it's literally midnight in Korea right now. And I am just too sweet to take, take time off his heavy schedule and, you know, talk to his Indian fans. So we completely understand. Uh, so thank you. So this is your solo journey, which is um, still a bit new. Now that you get to, you get the opportunity to take all the creative decisions by yourself. Yeah. And, uh, you you know, earlier that burden was shared. Do you think there has been a different level of growth in you as an artist? Comparing from the group album, the vibe is totally different because when you work um, as a team, as a group, you need to think about one and all the members and all members have different voices and they have different abilities. So you need to compare all the abilities, skills and the fans and the public so it's kind of complicated but when i'm working at my solo stuff i just concentrate at myself the one thing that if i may i've observed is you have definitely become more confident um after you became solo i feel like you uh, are more friendly with uh the camera and you from being an introverted person i feel like you're a lot more fun so that is my personal observation and um i hope i'm right another thing is that you are you speak english so well i think that was the first language you learned uh do you think that has proven advantageous for you as a brand in an industry where english is not the first language uh well english it's actually my, it was my, actually my first language because I, okay. like, I lived in Israel, like, right after I was born in Korea and then moved to Boston. So my first language was English, but, you know, mm -hmm. I lived in Korea for like, like more than 20 years. So actually, right now, my Korean is better than English, but I know my English is not really like, foreign, like, uh, the others like foreigners who speak as the English as a first language but I try to do mm -hmm. my best and not to forget English and um, you know when I'm in like a US tour as a group I need to like talk to everybody and I need to I'm kind of like a representative of the group so I have all the responsibility so but if I think that in a positive way I think that grown me 
like speak more better. You did that role beautifully, where you know I saw a lot of your American interviews where you were proactive and you took charge of all the interactions. So you did very well there. <laughs> How sweet! Uh, now you come from a very academic family. Your father was a scientist. I was so surprised to find that out. How did the son of a scientist go on to pursue music? And were there any concerns back from your family about such an uncertain profession? Well, when I was a child, um, I look up to my father, and to me, my role model is my father right now too. So I always look up to him, and I went to his science lab, and like you know, science came to me very naturally. So I was dreaming about a scientist, but. I think it was kind of like middle school or high school, and music came to me, and that bang to me in like some other way, and I thought to myself like, what if I make my own music? How would it be like? I was wondering like this, so I started music at that time, and science was like flew away. Oh my God, what a journey, right? I'm sure like back at home, everybody's proud of you. I have to ask you, what is the biggest sacrifice you made in order to fulfill your dream of pursuing music? Sacrifice? Hmm. Yes, biggest. Biggest sacrifice. This is a unique question. I like this, mm, nice. <laughs> Thank you. There's a lots of fans who loves me and I make music and I need to respond that love, so I need to watch my behavior. But I think this is not a sacrifice. But when I'm on the studio and when I make my music, that causes lots of energy and emotions. So I feel like when I'm making music, I sacrifice my emotion and my physical stuff. Cause it's like, you know, tiny stuff can be a big stuff to me when I'm working music because that can give me um, like some idea and all the environments can give me some idea but that like I can stack them in my side but when I'm working music I need to like use that so I'm almost like sacrificing my inner side stuff. That is such a deep answer and I can tell it's very honest. I, I feel for you. I. I hope that the music that you make and the fact that you can follow your passion compensates for that sacrifice. And in the end, that it makes you happy. Music is your passion. And if that is taken away from you, what is the one thing that will come closest to filling that void in your life? Uh, I would like to say music. <laughs> you know, to me, music, um, the reason I make music is, of course, there's lots of fans who love my music, but music to me, it's kind of like a diary. How I was thinking at that time and what I was looking to and what I got inspired from, I think music and the reason I make music is, is just to like memo the moment, what I was thinking at that time. That's like exposing to the audience the phase that you are in, that itself is vulnerable, but you're doing a great job. Uh, now, I'm going to move on to the next segment. Uh, we have a tradition on this show. Every single time we have a foreign artist, we request them to give a message to their Indian fans in one of our many languages, which is Hindi. So if you are comfortable, I'll help you. Love it. Okay, uh, I'm going to tell you the meaning in English first, so you know what you're saying. The meaning is, you are the reason I live, uh, to oh, the fans. Oh, that's so sweet. It's romantic, right? I, I, I know it's very late, but I want you to be a little bit dramatic when you say it. Is that okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> Love it. Okay, let's go. We'll go slowly. Say me. Say me. Joji. Joji. Rahahu. Rahahu. Vaja tum ho. Vaja tum ho. Oh, you're so good at this. You're not even struggling. Well, just give me a okay, chance I'm to like, in one go. say in a one yeah. sentence. Yeah. It's me joji raha hu vaja tum ho. Me joji raha hu vaja tum ho. Okay, that was awesome, but you have to say it with a little bit drama. Please, please, you have to. Very naturally. You, you want it very naturally, right? Yeah, but a little bit dramatic. Okay. You know, just a little bit. Okay. Me jo raha hu vaja tum ho. Me joji raha hu vaja tum ho. Forget what I say. Me joji raha 
Vajoji Rahafu Vajatum Ho. Yes! Oh my god! I thought you'll struggle. You are so... That's not an easy sentence. You got it. Okay, moving on to the last segment. This is a rapid fire, but not a silly one. Like, okay, okay. somewhere related to music. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to see a fun side of you. Okay? Uh, ten questions very fast. Can we start? I'm cool. Okay, the first one. Do you remember the first lyrics you ever wrote? Ah, uh, no. No? No. Uh, do you remember when you wrote it, like the age? I think it was like um, when I was 17 or 16. Okay, that's early. Is there a fan encounter that had a profound impact on you? Ah. Uh, there's a fan that requested to me to name his son and I, I just wrote it and she really named that to her son. Oh my god. What was the first expensive splurge you made? My speaker. Your speaker? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you still have it? The first yeah, one? Uh, I still have it. I'm using it. Awesome. Okay, next one. What did you do with your first ever paycheck? Uh, just put inside the bank. Okay, smart. You invested. Okay, next. Fine dining at a fancy restaurant or home delivery in pajamas. Is there somebody or is it just me? That is up to you. You want to go with somebody, you take them along. No, uh, delivery service. Okay, next. Is there something you want to change about yourself? Uh, a better body shape. What rubbish. You already have a good body. <laughs> like, uh, people dream to get there. <laughs> Okay, next. Your favorite cocktail? Alexander. If you wake up 20 years from now, what is the first thing that you will Google? 20 years ago? From now, in the future. Holy. Stock? <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you Google something like what catastrophe happened that I woke up like 20 years from now? No? And so it seems like Iams invested a lot of money. Mm. Okay, next. Biggest highlight of your career so far? Uh, May 14, my debut date. Debut date. Oh. Okay, last one. Your favorite school memory? School memory. Mm. Oh. Were you like a good kid or were you a naughty one? Uh, I was a good kid. I was kind of like okay. quite popular. Mm, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Maybe in the elementary school? In Boston, yep. Now, we cannot wrap up without one thing. Um, I know you love your fans, but let's talk about the Indian fans specifically. Please share a message for them, everybody who's watching. Tell them everything you want to say to them. May Joji Rahafu Vaja Tomho. Oh my god! <laughs> Indian fans, it's for you. Did you really remember that all the way? Yep. That's so nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I know you must be tired, you must be exhausted. But not at all, not at all. I know you would say that, but it just means a lot uh, to fit us in your schedule. I wish you all the very best for this album and the many more to come. I hope you keep entertaining us for many, many years to come. And I hope you keep enjoying your music. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for having me. And if there is an opportunity to go to India, I will really wish to have a concert in there. Awesome. Please come. We would love to host you. And take care. Bye-bye. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste India. This is I am and you are watching me on Enough.